Iran has attacked two U.S. air bases in Iraq in response to the assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, according to its foreign minister. More than a dozen rockets were fired at uh, Al-Assad air base to the west of Baghdad and another base close to the city of Erbil in the Kurdish-controlled region. The Iranian foreign minister described the attacks as proportionate measures in self-defense. No deaths have been reported and the U.S. said they were still assessing the damage. So how shall we evaluate the Iranian response? What to expect from the U.S. side next? Joining me for the discussion from Tehran is uh, Hamid Musavi, professor of political science at the University of Tehran, and from Florida, Dr. Ivan Elan, senior fellow at the Independent Institute. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. Before we start the discussion, let's first get a quick look at the Chinese position. Now, uh, Geng Shuang, the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson, made a statement regarding the latest developments. Let's listen in. We call on relevant parties to exercise restraint and resolve differences through dialogue on the basis of mutual respect to maintain regional peace and stability. All right, so the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs calling for calm and de escalation. Let's take a look at what uh, Iranian Foreign Minister Jawad Zarif said on a statement on Twitter shortly after the attacks that took place around, eight, uh, around 2 a.m. local time. The Twitter says Iran took and concluded proportionate measures in self-defense under Article 51 of UN Charter, targeting base from which cowardly armed attack against our citizens and senior officials were launched. We do not seek escalation or war, but will defend ourselves against any aggression. So, Professor Musavi, let me go to you first. Uh, explain to us the, the rationality behind this action by the Iranian side and uh, help us understand also so uh, how is the proportionality uh, qualified from the Iranian side? Yes, yeah, so essentially from the Iranian perspective, Iran had no choice but to respond. I mean, Qasem Soleimani was one of the most powerful figures in Iran and had huge popularity. And his assassination was seen as a international terrorism committed against Iran. Now, when Iran retaliated, I would say it is significant based on three facts. First of all is that um, Iran conducted the retaliation directly and not through its proxies. Uh, second, Iran uh, fired the missiles from its own territory, which shows that Iran has the capability to strike U.S. military bases. And third, Iran publicly uh, took responsibility for the attack. So that makes it, I think, a significant retaliation. But at the same time, I think Iran's uh, retaliation was very measured and even less than proportionate. So even less than what Dr. Zarif said, because uh, as you mentioned, uh, little to no casualties have been reported. And the reason for this is I think Iran does not want a full-scale war with the United States. Rather, the aim was to send a very bold and direct message to the Americans. Hmm. Um, Dr. Island, let me go to you. Uh, from your perspective, were you surprised that the Iranian action or reprisal came so quickly? And what do you think uh, the messages that are being sent, uh, as highlighted by Dr. Musavi, uh, by Professor Musavi, as to the proportionality uh, on the Iranian side that they want to show they have to do something or they need to do something in return, but uh, they don't want to the situation to escalate. Yes, I think as the, that analysis is quite correct. I think the Iranian government has handled this uh, very well so far. I mean, uh, and they've, to use a basketball analogy, they have uh, symbolically uh, retaliated, uh, provided, of course, that we, we don't see any more casualties than we already think there weren't many or any at all. And they did this in the middle of the night uh, when people would be sleeping, there would be fewer casualties. And they also know that the U.S. has detection capabilities to know when the missiles are launched. So I think, uh, you know, this is a symbolic strike, and I think it satisfies the need uh, for, uh, from the Iranian people who are very mad about this assassination to, uh, it's, it's, it uh, helps uh, say, yes, uh, the government is doing something, uh, we're pushing back. 
but at the same time, they, they haven't escalated. They made a statement saying they don't want to escalate it. And then, to use the basketball analogy, they've thrown the ball back into the U.S. court. Now, the question is, uh, <clears throat> uh, Donald Trump is has, has, has known for his erratic behavior, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully, cooler heads will prevail and uh, there won't be any further uh, U.S. action, or if it is, it'll be minor. Uh, we need to de-escalate this, and I think that um, both sides need to step back, and I mm. think that's what the Iranians are uh, trying to do. We'll see if the U.S. Uh, leader, he's supposed to speak to the nation uh, this morning. We'll see what his response is, but hopefully he won't take any more rash actions uh, such as the original assassination. Mm. Uh, Professor Musavi, how do you um, foresee the kind of reactions from the United States? Do you think Iran's measuredness, you know, the, 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 the way how Iran has handled the situation um, very skillfully, do you think that message will be perceived and understood by the U.S. administration? And fortunately, hopefully, there will be enough people around President Trump who's going to give him the right kind of advice as to what to do next next because according to the latest statement from the U.S.'s uh, uh, defense secretary, it seems that the U.S. is also wanting to make it clear that they don't want escalation. They, they are not seeking a war with Iran. Well, it's very difficult to tell the future. I mean, this is a U.S. president that is very unpredictable and makes rash decisions. One good sign is that he was going to speak to the nation, to the U.S. nation, uh, right after the attacks uh, last night, mm -hmm. but he canceled that, and instead he's going to talk this morning. So that is perhaps a good sign that cooling heads are prevailing. But at the same time, just because Iran is showing restraint doesn't necessarily mean that Trump will, would also like to de-escalate. And the reason I'm saying that is a year and a half ago when the Trump administration decided to leave the nuclear accord, the international community called for restraint from the Iranian side. And actually Iran for a whole year obliged by all of its obligations under the nuclear deal. And the result was only more sanctions. So in that case, actually, restraint by Iran worked against it. It was actually seen as a sign of weakness by the Trump administration and only led to more pressure. Hopefully, this won't be the case this time around. Um, Dr. Eland, how do you explain the fact that no U.S. personnel were injured or uh, killed as far as the assessment is concerned by now. Um, that seems to be a very important detail here. Help us, help the audience understand exactly what has been done to avoid that no U.S. personnel is targeted or killed uh, during the latest attack by the Iranian side. Well, I think the Iranians may have, uh, there's suspicions here in the Uni United States that Iran uh, attempted to minimize casualties by attacking in the middle of the night where everybody, is, you know, there's less activity on the base. Of course, the U.S. has warning systems, as I mentioned, that they know when these missiles are launched so they can send everyone to bunkers and uh, safety. Uh, so that's another, that's another, um, uh, you know, evidence, uh, piece of evidence. And I think that, um, you know, this is similar, I think, to what the U.S. did when it hit Syria over the alleged uh, chemical weapons used by Assad. They warned the Russians and the Syrians that the Tomahawk missiles were coming. So it was sort of, sometimes these things are choreographed, or at least, if not totally choreographed, uh, a warning is given. And I think uh, that may be the case here, uh, at least to some extent. And I mm -hmm. think, uh, hopefully, uh, th this Iranian response, uh, they had to respond from their own territory to show that uh, they me meant business. They weren't going to use a proxy because they felt that their top level person had been assassinated. But I think the Iranian response is, is about the best uh, we can hope for to de-escalate the situation. Mm -hmm. And now I, I think uh, being an American, I say it is in our court. We need to de-escalate de this and, you know, ca call it a day and, uh, uh, you know, uh, try to put the relationship back on you know, track toward a better, maybe, maybe this, you know, sometimes events like this have positive effects in that people, people get scared and uh, that sort of thing. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Soviet Union and the U.S. arch enemies 
uh, did come to the table for arms control and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, maybe this would provide some sort of a, a impetus to that. I, that's okay. an optimistic view. I don't know if it's going to happen, but sure. you know, sometimes, sometimes it does. Right. Well, um, let me still read out what the what Iran's Revolutionary Guard released as a statement via Iranian state TV. It says, uh, "We are warning all American allies who gave their bases to its." Uh, uh, terrorist army that any territory that is the starting point of aggressive acts against Iran will be targeted. So, Professor Musavi, I understand the very mixed feeling sentiments that are um, uh, ripe at this moment within your country. What do you think is, is the biggest challenge for the policymakers in Tehran to deal with this situation in a way that is dignified, that also serves Iran's best interest? Yes, um, uh, if I may add to the previous question, mm -hmm. one of the theories of why there were very few or maybe no casualties is that it's been reported that actually Iran uh, tipped the Iraqi government over an hour before the attacks that the attacks were going to happen. And it is perhaps uh, probable that the Iraqis tipped the Americans. But we know for a fact that the Iranians uh, tipped the Iraqi government over an hour before the attacks. So I think that that is very important when considering the number of casualties. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding the question you just raised, I think the situation for Iran is very tricky. Uh, we have to understand when Iran is talking about when it issues a statement against U.S. bases in the region is that Iran feels that it is being surrounded by U.S. troops. I mean, the United States has bases in Iraq, in Kuwait, in Afghanistan, in Bahrain, in Qatar, UAE, you name it. So, so essentially, there is a lot of military hardware that is surrounding Iran. And at the same time, the Americans are putting the so-called maximum pressure campaign of a lot of sanctions on Iran. And when you put so much pressure on a country, you cannot really expect it not to lash out and not to retaliate. So unless I think the Trump administration decides to perhaps back away a little from the policy it has pursued in the past two years, I think in the future we will have even more instability and more hostility okay. between the two countries. All right. We have to leave it there. We'll keep a close watch on the situation as uh, U.S. President Donald Trump is expected to address the nation. Many thanks to Hamed Musavi of the University of Tehran and Dr. Ivan Elin, senior fellow from the Independent Institute.